Hey there, and welcome back to our channel. If you're thinking of listing your house, decluttering is a crucial step in the process. In today's video, we'll guide you through the steps to declutter your house, make it more appealing to potential buyers, and ultimately help you sell faster and for more money. My name is Robert Clements, and I'm a Seniors Real Estate Specialist, Pricing Strategy Advisor, and Real Estate Negotiation Expert here in Georgia. Let's get started. Decluttering your house before listing can have a significant impact on its presentation and the offers you receive. A clutter-free space looks more spacious, inviting, and lets potential buyers envision themselves living there. Anything that's dirty or broken needs to be cleaned, fixed, or removed. Anything that reminds potential buyers that you're still living there is a distraction, and it needs to be removed. When potential buyers go into a house that's been properly staged, they stay longer. They look around and they picture themselves living there. Not only that, but it sends a message that you probably took good care of the house while you were living there. A dirty, cluttered house, on the other hand, sends buyers running the other way. Plus, a well-organized house can save you time and stress when it's time to pack and move. So, let's dive into our step-by-step -step guide to decluttering and staging your house before listing. Part 2. Sorting Your Items First things first, let's sort through your items. We recommend the three-box method. One box for items you want to keep, one for items you want to donate or sell, and one for items you want to discard. We recommend that you try and make your house look like a model home. You probably want to remove around 50 to 75 percent of your items from the house. Any small items should be put away and stored. Only large decorative items should be left on the shelves. When we remove clutter, we remove distractions. Start with one room at a time and pick up each item. Ask yourself, do I need this? Do I use it? Does it bring me joy? If the answer is yes to any of those questions, place it in the keep box. If not, decide if it's worth donating or selling, or if you're better off just throwing it away. Remember, stay focused on one room at a time so you avoid feeling overwhelmed. Once you've sorted through all of the rooms, you'll have a clear idea of what needs to be stored, donated, sold, or discarded. Part 3. Organizing Your Belongings Now that you've sorted through your items, it's time to organize your belongings. The goal is to create a clean, clutter-free space that's easy for potential buyers to navigate. First, store any items that you're keeping but don't need to use daily. You might want to use clear storage containers to keep things organized and label each container so you can easily find what you need. You might consider utilizing furniture that has built-in storage like ottomans, shelves, or benches. This can help maximize space and keep clutter out of sight. You can neatly store boxes somewhere out of sight like in the garage. Another option if you run out of room is to rent a storage container. One option is pods, portable on-demand storage. Basically you load the container and they will store it somewhere off site for you. And yeah, it costs money. Selling your house costs money. But it'll be worth it in the long run when your house sells quicker and for more money. Preparing items for donation or sale. With your belongings organized, it's time to address the items you've decided to donate or sell. Start by gathering all of your items for donation and placing them in bags or boxes. Be sure to research local charities or donation centers in your area and make note of their drop-off hours. For items that you plan to sell, Consider hosting a garage sale or using online platforms like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or Craigslist. Take clear, well-lit photos of each item and write detailed descriptions to make them more appealing to potential buyers. Part 5. Disposing of Unwanted Items It's time to dispose of items that you've decided to discard. Always be responsible when getting rid of your unwanted belongings. Recycle items that can be recycled. Make sure to properly dispose of hazardous materials like paint or electronics at designated facilities. For large items or an excessive amount of trash, consider renting a dumpster or hiring a junk removal service. Part 6. Cleaning and Depersonalization I've had lots of people turned off by cleanliness issues that could have easily been fixed. In particular, people will be looking at the kitchens and the bathrooms. Be sure to clean the walls, appliances, light fixtures, switch plates, doors, and trim. Make sure all of the counters, surfaces, and storage areas are clean. 
turn on all of the lights and make sure everything looks really clean. You'll also want to make sure your house is depersonalized. Remove any personal items, especially pictures. It's very distracting to potential buyers when they see personal items. Our goal is for potential buyers to see themselves living there, not you. Seeing your personal items makes them feel like they're intruding. Part 7, Final Touches With your house decluttered, organized, and clean, you're almost ready to list. But don't forget about the finishing touches. Add some artificial flowers or potted plants, put out fresh linens, and consider rearranging furniture to create a more open and inviting space. These small details can make a big difference in how your house is perceived by potential buyers. And don't forget about the outside. Curb appeal is important. People are going to get their first impression when they drive up to the house, and first impressions are lasting impressions. Make sure the landscaping looks good and is maintained. Be sure the porch is clean, have a clean doormat, and a clean front door. Conclusion And that's it! By following these steps, you've decluttered your house, and you've made it more appealing to potential buyers. Remember, a clean, organized, and clutter-free space can have a significant impact on the offers that you receive. So, do the right thing and invest some time and effort into decluttering your house before you list it. I've seen what happens when buyers go through a house that's been properly staged. They stick around and they start picturing themselves living there. They think about what they might want to do with their items, what they want to do with the house. That's what we want. When buyers go into a house that's not properly staged, say there's family pictures, stuff on the fridge, knickknacks everywhere, they feel like they're intruding. They get distracted and they focus on other things. They want to get out of there quickly and they don't focus on the right things. But what I know, I'm just a realtor. I can't make you do anything, but I can make you wish you did something. If you don't take the time to properly declutter and stage your house before you list it, you're going to be wishing you did. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more real estate videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll see you in the next video.